Good afternoon, and thank you so much for joining us for today's Lunch with Haley. The title of today's presentation is Social is a Science. Uh, I am Brad Smith, the Director of Social Media and SEO at, here at Haley Marketing, and I'm really excited to have Kyle Denhoff join us. Kyle is one of our Social Media Marketing Advisors and our in-house guru on what works in social media. Uh, today we're going to share some wonderful examples of other staffing firms that are doing things right on social. We're going to share some case studies and some really great information. However, before we jump into things, I just wanted to do some quick housekeeping. We always get the question whether or not the slides are going to be available, and as a matter of fact, they are. The uh, slides can be accessible from the link in the chat window uh, in your sidebar. So there's a link there. Please feel free to download the slides before or after if you'd like. And also, since this is a webinar about social media, we have our whole social media team here having a conversation on Twitter. Uh, the Twitter handle is at Haley Marketing, and the hashtag is Lunch with Haley. So if you're inclined to uh, do two things at once, listen to the webinar and interact on social through Twitter, please do. Um, our team will be answering questions there. So if uh, you want some more detail on a specific topic that we cover, feel free to pop over to Twitter and, and check that out. And even after the webinar, uh, if you want to look at the hashtag Lunch with Haley, you'll see some great conversation happening there with several of your staffing peers and our social media team and, and maybe answer some questions that uh, you might have had as well. So let's jump in. Today's agenda, and we have a lot to cover. Uh, first of all, we're going to talk a little bit about social media for staffing. Uh, we hear how, about how important social media is in our daily lives, how important it is for um, business and communication. But we're going to dig deeper. We're going to talk specifically about staffing and recruiting and what it does for a staffing and recruiting firm. We're going to walk through what social media sites you should be using. Not all social media sites are equal for every industry or every geographic location. We're going to explain to you how you can figure out what social site is most important for your audience. We'll walk through what to share and walk through some best practices and what we've seen work through some A-B testing. And finally, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about insights and data and really how you can use this information to your advantage to make better business decisions and better marketing decisions. So let's kick things off with what social media can do for my staffing company. We know how important it is. Um, social media can help you create a large talent network. We hear all the time uh, one of the benefits about using a staffing and recruiting firm is that you have access to some passive talent. You can help companies get, get that uh, coveted passive candidate. Well, if you look at your internal databases, how many of those people are really passive candidates? A lot uh, maybe are, are temporary workers. Um, Social media is a great way for you to reach that passive candidate. Get in front of people constantly um, and continuously with a good message and make sure that you're there when they might be kind of considering a, a, a move in career. Social media helps you amplify your reach of content and we'll share some examples of that in, in, in the real world. Social media is a great lead generation tool. Um, think about it this way. If, if you had a, a magic phone that would let you call 100 of your prospects with one single dial, would you use it? Of course you would. Social media is kind of like that tool. It lets you reach a huge audience and reach them with a consistent message, be in front of them, provide value, and drive traffic back to your site where they can take action, where they can uh, request you for you to contact them, where they can reach out to you directly. It's a great, great lead generation tool. And the last on this list is customer service. Customer service and social media go hand in hand. People are out there using social media as a way to reach out to you, as a way to connect with you, as a way to seek out service. And when I say social media, I'm not just talking about Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn. I'm also talking about sites like Yelp, uh, so, so social review sites, site like, sites like Yahoo Reviews, Google Reviews. People are using these to voice concerns, um, voice how good your service was, and you really need to pay attention to those conversations so that you can help control the message, so that you can provide people with service on the platform that they're requesting it. I talked about a large talent network, and here's a quick graphic that just explains how truly large this network is. Social media is involved in just about every aspect uh, of our life. Everyone's on social media. And you can see from these stats here that it's extremely important that you're on, not only on social media, but you're active there. You're paying attention. You're pushing out content. 
Social media, as, as I shared with the example of, of the magic phone, it's a great way to amplify your reach, amplify your content, get your message in front of more and more people. If you have 10 internal recruiters and they each have 100 connections and they each share an article, you're reaching 1,000 people. Okay, now let's say 10% of those 1,000 people share your content again. 10% of those people share your content again. As you can see, your content gets amplified and you end up reaching a much wider audience, not only of people that you're currently connected to, but people who your connections are connected to. So it's a great way to get your message in front of a very, very large audience. And uh, we don't have time to go through all the, all the points here, but Kyle has actually put together a, a wonderful blog post on this, and it shares some very specific tips and strategies for how you can use uh, your existing network to amplify your content, to get in front of more qualified candidates, to get in front of more prospects. And uh, if you just Google the um, spreading the word, how to use your employees as outlets, you'll find this blog post. It's a great piece of content, and I suggest uh, reading that after, after the webinar. Some great tips. Uh, as I mentioned, lead generation is a big component of social media. We all want social media to be effective. We want to see some ROI, and it can. Uh, LinkedIn released a recruiting trend survey, and they found that social professional networks one of the 10 most important places to find quality hires. Okay, so this not only helps you on the recruiting aspect, but think about it from the, the, your client's shoes. They're out on social media. They're out on LinkedIn trying to recruit internally. Uh, if you can be active in places that they're looking, if you can be active on LinkedIn, sharing recruiting tips and best practices, um, sharing things about presenting offers, dealing with counter offers, um, you know, really providing some, some value, they're going to turn to you when they find that they can't hire somebody or they can't find the talent or they just need help. Okay? If you're there, if you're the voice of reason, if you're providing value when they're trying to make a hire, they're going to pick up the phone and call you. Okay? It's a great great lead generation tool as long as you're consistent and as long as you put content in the right places. Um, Kyle, I know you're a big proponent of using social media to help improve your, your customer service. So if you wouldn't mind, kind of walk us through a little bit about uh, how staffing and recruiting firms can use this as part of their uh, customer service process. Yeah, with um, Facebook's Facebook specifically in this example, um, you can see the comments down the right side. And what Facebook allows you to do uh, is respond to those comments. So this client specifically posted a job opening and got some questions from uh, potential candidates out there. And, and you can use social as a recruiter helpline. Uh, you can use social uh, as a way to respond to those people and provide job search resources, application resources, and also directions on how to apply. And as you can see down the comments there, individual recruiters went on and provided help as well as the company. Uh, and in the end, they provided a link to where you can apply for this job online. Uh, and the one thing I wanted to point out here was the reach in the bottom left-hand side of that. Uh, this post ended up seeing close to 500 people. So this client's name and logo got in front of a large audience just by being uh, a customer service and, and recruiter helpline on Facebook. Great. Thank you, Kyle. Um, one question that we get all the time is, what social sites should I be on? And I'm going to tell you there's no right answer. There's no one answer that fits for every staffing firm. And that's because you all staff for different areas. So the network that you're going to use to reach engineers is quite different than the network you're going to use to reach pickers and packers or nurses or uh, physicians. So really you need to spend some time to determine where your audience resides. It's like, it's like any marketing activity. You need to find out where your audience is and use the right medium to reach them. So Kyle, I know you have some great tools to help you determine where your audience, uh, what social sites your audience uses. And if you wouldn't mind, kind of walk through the top three networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter, and, and give us some insight into how you go about determining where to spend your time socially. Yep, so, so with our clients that do a lot of social marketing, um, we generally start out by saying, you know, we're going to stick to Facebook, Twitter, and LinkedIn because of how large those networks are. Uh, but you can really nail down um, where your audience spends their time. And there's a couple ways to do that. 
Uh, one is to offer a short survey in your applicant paperwork. So if an applicant comes into your brick and mortar facility, uh, at the beginning of their paperwork or the end, slip in a little survey that simply asks, which social networks do you use every week? And, and try to gain some insights as to where they're spending their time. You can also do this through your email newsletters. So create a survey on SurveyMonkey. Send out a link through your emails to your candidates and clients. Get them to fill it out. And then also you can pull your Facebook page or your LinkedIn group. Uh, I know Facebook has taken this out and put this feature back in, but if you have access to put a poll on your page, again, ask where they, they spend their time, and you'll get a better understanding of your audience uh, and where they log in every day so that you're not just guessing and assuming they're on the big sites. Great. And, and Kyle, you know, walk through a little bit how to determine what to share. It's another question that we get. Um, you know, we're active or we have these social accounts, but nobody in our office really knows what to share, what resonates with, with their audience. So give us some insight there. Yeah, so with, with each network, we, we try to preach here at Haley, you know, each network has its own personality. Uh, there should be a different strategy for each. Uh, LinkedIn, those people are on LinkedIn strictly for business purposes. You're going to want to be sharing uh, long-form content that relates to their business. Facebook, you can show your personality. You can show the people behind your brand. Really tell that brand story and kind of connect on a business and personal level. And then Twitter is, is a true social network. You can have conversation uh, and, and really give your brand a voice. And this image here, we actually pulled from one of our clients and, and talking about what to share. Uh, and you can, as you can see there, the visual posts do very well. Video and photo perform well. They reach a much larger audience, and they also get more clicks and engagement. So someone clicking, commenting, sharing on a post. Um, that happens when you put out a visual. So we're not saying every single post needs to be a photo or video, but definitely use visual content uh, to share with your audience and get a better response. And then going back to uh, LinkedIn specifically, you'll, we talked about they're there for business. So what are some of the posts that we've seen successful at Haley? So for all of our clients, um, things can do with salary data, things to do with hot jobs, white papers, case studies and presentations, uh, things you see in the workplace, longer form content that people are interested in. And on the right there, one of our clients did a specific post on salaries and had a call to action. Uh, and as you can see, it had 700 impressions and 17 clicks. Uh, and for us, those impressions get the client's name uh, in front of a much larger audience on LinkedIn. And, and that's, those are the type of posts you're going to want to be thinking about for your LinkedIn audience. Yeah, and just to add something, Kyle, uh, graphics are, are something that in the past in LinkedIn uh, maybe didn't look as great, but they've changed their platform a little bit. So when at all possible, include graphics. It really helps your post pop out. Absolutely, and, and it's the same, same thing on Facebook, using those, those visual uh, pieces to, to spread out there. And, and like we talked about Facebook, you can show the personality of your brand. And I really think that uh, people trust public opinion. They trust other people. They trust their friends, their family, and reviews. Um, so if you show that there's um, a personality behind your company logo, there's actual people there here to help you, you're going to be very successful. So share your story uh, and, and let your audience start to trust the people behind the logo. And as you can see on the right here, one of our clients did a great job during the holidays and they shared uh, their ugly sweater day. And just a picture, you know, they're having fun at the office and there's people behind the, the Portico logo here to help you. And then Twitter, and, and, and we can talk about Twitter, and we, we talked about how it's a conversation, and again, you can really um, share visual content on Twitter now, um, but it's, it's very much a conversation. Uh, and as you can see on the right there, we had a conversation um, with one of our followers. You can send direct messages, and, and with Twitter, you're going to want to connect with your clients, your candidates, and potential leads. You can even connect with your competitors and the people that they're talking to, um, and then offer questions and provide answers. 
and, and really be a resource for uh, your your audience out there. And we talked about the customer service piece. Twitter is a great way to do that uh, and get out there and interact with people directly. Kyle, a great question just came in asking about really where to source graphics from. For smaller organizations, they may not have the internal resources, so where can they get graphics to share? Is it okay to share graphics that others have produced if you give um, credit? You know, how does that work, and, and where do you go about sourcing uh, graphics? Yep, the, the one thing I, I generally tell clients to find graphics that's great is most of them have Microsoft PowerPoint, and if you go to PowerPoint and you uh, go to insert image, you can actually find a, a clip art gallery, but they're not kind of the, the corny clip art that, that came out in the 90s. There's a lot more um, graphics and photos there to pick from. Uh, and since you own the software, you own the rights to those photos. So we'll actually grab some of those. Here at Haley, we, we do work with ThinkStock, so we're able to grab images there. But uh, Google actually added a new tool actually this week. Uh, so if you search images on Google and you can go under tools, you can pick a filter that allows you to find photos that are given for commercial use. So you can actually grab those photos. Uh, there's also another website out there called Morgue File. Uh, it's a Creative Commons where uh, creative photographers post images for, for you to use. So. Uh, there's a bunch of tools, and, and to be safe, use those free tools. Um, you can give a reference, but I try to stay away from, from using, using others' photos. Yeah, one thing, too, there, there are a lot of organizations out there that produce infographics, and there's some really compelling infographics out there. And most companies, when they produce an infographic, have done so in the hopes that other people are going to share it. So if you do come across a good infographic, um, I, I would encourage you to, to share that. It's, it's good content, and you're helping the, pub, the original publisher, too. All right, um, Kyle, you know, I'm a big proponent of data. And, and if anybody's listened to our past webinars, they know I'm, I always preach that data can help you make better marketing decisions. So within social media, there are a few uh, different sources of data. One is Facebook Insight, another is Twitter Analytics, another is LinkedIn Analytics. And this kind of ties exactly into a question that was just asked by uh, one of the viewers today. You know, And the question was, I'm pretty active on social media, but I get very little engagement, and I'm confused as to why. And when you're trying to figure that out, I would actually take a look at these insights. Look at what posts you did get the most engagement on, and try to look for um, some common ground. Was, did it include a photo? Did it cover a specific topic? Was it fun? Was it business oriented? So look for the posts that do get the most engagement, and then kind of build your strategy around that. Um, I hope I'm not jumping ahead too much, but, but Kyle, if you wouldn't mind kind of walking through each of these different areas of analytics and what metrics you should focus on and how you can use this information to provide uh, better social marketing. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I, I want to start with Facebook Insights. Uh, now that Facebook is a, is a publicly traded company, they give us a lot of tools to be better business owners. Uh, so first and foremost, if you're uh, an admin of your Facebook business page, you can go to your page, you'll see the admin panel, and in the top right there, there's a button for See Insights, and you'll want to click on that, and we'll be able to kind of walk through uh, the different insights that, that you can look at. And, then, and when you click on that See Insights button, you'll come to an overview page, and that's just an overview of the short time period. It's, it's generally a week of your page's performance. You can see likes on your page, your reach, which is how many people saw your posts. You can look at visits to your page. You can look at each individual post from that week. Um, and then we can talk about how looking at, at the people that visit your page as well. And, and first, we're going to talk about likes. And you can click on the navigation, as you can see there, the second one from the left. You'll click on likes. And you can pick a time period. Uh, this, we're looking at the year growth for the Haley Marketing page. But you can break it down by week, month, or quarter, depending how active you are on social. And look for growth trends. See what was shared to produce those results. So if you see rapid growth during a week or a month, what, what did you guys do on social media or in your other marketing initiatives that resulted in that growth? Did 
you send an email out that had a call to action? Or did you send out a direct mail piece that drew people to your Facebook page? And, and start to, to test what's working to grow your page. And then we can dig a little deeper. And like I talked about where you can look at each individual um, day, week, uh, month, or, or even you know, quarter or year, you can review likes and unlikes and, and what was shared to produce that result. And, and here on the left, you can see our spikes of likes and unlikes. And, and I'm glad to see we have more likes. Um, and as you saw, we, we grew this year. But I want you to, to pick out those spikes. Uh, and the one highlighted with the circle is actually a post that we shared off to the right there. And, and we put out a post that reminded people to check their inboxes because we sent out an animated email that, that day. And I want you to look for these spikes and see what you did in your marketing that week that resulted in the spike. Uh, and, and what can we learn from this? One, uh, a, a reminder post about your email newsletter and a strong call to action in that newsletter can spark engagement. Uh, and, and with this post specifically, we got likes, comments, and shares on this Facebook post. So those likes and shares show up in those individuals' personal news feed to share with their personal network. Uh, so people who may not have heard of Haley Marketing or haven't liked us yet, they saw that their friend liked us, came to the page, and resulted in more likes. So we'll want to look at spikes. And again, like Brad, you mentioned, uh, being able to share consistent posts that are performing well. Yeah, Kyle, a comment just came in here, too, that uh, someone on, on the call here has found that and oftentimes the silly and stupid pictures are what gets the uh, most engagement. And I think that certainly in some cases is correct. But uh, on the professional side of things, there's some things that you can do to kind of pair a, a really interesting photo with a piece of content. So, you know, I'll give you an example. Let's say you had a great blog article on your site that talked about retention and how to keep your top performers. Well, maybe your image is a little bit more compelling and it's not just, you know, the, the typical people standing in an office shaking hands. Maybe it's something uh, where somebody's pulling their hair out or carrying a cardboard box and the main headline of your post is, you're fired or something that's a little bit more provocative. So you can use images that are silly, either silly, funny, um, or just a little outlandish that captures people's attention. And I think that will help increase engagement too. So not only look for interesting pictures, but look for interesting headlines. Your headline doesn't have to be stale and in, you know, ultra professional all the time, especially on Facebook. You can have a little fun with it. You can use provocative titles. And uh, we even do this in, in email marketing, and we find that uh, subject lines that are a little bit more provocative um, get the most attention. So you can try this on, on social media as well. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we can actually dig a little deeper into our likes, and that's where this graph comes into play. Uh, you can see where your likes are coming from. And as you can see there, the, the purple is our on page. So someone visits your page uh, and likes it. Or they come from a mobile device. And that's why we wanted to bring up this graphic. Uh, as you can see, we had a spike in, in mobile likes during the year. And you're going to want to appeal to mobile audiences through your social marketing. Uh, and the best two ways to do that, have, have strong calls to action. Make it easy. One click and they visit a page on your site where they can take action. Also have mobile friendly images uh, that, are, that are squares and they'll shrink um, for the site. You don't need to worry about um, creating a specific image that will shrink for phones or tablets. Just make sure it's a, a square and Facebook will do that for you. And we wanted to also bring up a little fun fact. Uh, 10 to 15 percent of our traffic on our staffing websites in 2013 came from mobile devices. Uh, and that's going to continue to rise in 2014. So be aware, not only with your website um, mobile experience, but also your social mobile experience. 
Yeah, you know, Kyle, on average that was that was ten to fifteen. We've seen some sites as high as thirty to forty and it's doubled since uh, 2012. So in 2014, I would uh, expect this to continue to rise and maybe even double. So we might be looking at, on average, 20 to 30 percent next year. So if you don't have a mobile-friendly website, you, you should really consider getting one and uh, take into account mobile across all of your uh, online marketing uh, activities. Yep, and the uh, the next thing I, I wanted to look at here was in the navigation there, you can see the, the third uh, navigation point from the left is reach and Facebook lets you look at reach and, and what reach is is the impressions your post gets so it shows up in those individuals uh, news feeds uh, so as you can see look for spikes in your reach and again what was shared that day that resulted in a strong response and reach uh, and Brad you'll like this one this specific example was from Brad's birthday um, and one of our um, graphic designers Linda brought in a cake with a little humor for the social media team and for Brad and we got a great response a ton of likes comments and, and shares for this post and it reached um, a lot more people than our, our typical post and again go in here and look at those spikes and see what was shared and, and what can we learn from this post specifically is share your brand story including the people behind the logo like we talked about you know showing that you guys have fun uh, showing that you have a personality behind just the business. You know, I think one thing that really helped drive the reach on this is a lot of people internally here at the company shared this. A lot of people commented on it. And you can do the same in your staffing organization. So when you're putting out content on Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter, get people to retweet it, get people to comment on it, get people to like it from their personal accounts. It not only reaches everybody in their personal network, but uh, for Facebook's algorithm, uh, Facebook looks and sees that people are commenting, people are interacting with that piece of content, and they show it to more people. It increases impressions, it gets in front of more. So encourage your internal staff to comment and be active on social on your corporate page. Yeah, absolutely, Brad. That, that goes back to the, the content amplification that you talked about earlier. It's just having people share it reaches a much, much larger audience. Uh, this next point that you can look at is visits and where visits are coming from on your page specifically. Uh, and we wanted to bring up this, this graph and, and the example uh, to the right because you can look at those individual tabs on your Facebook page. So if you go to a Facebook page, you generally have your logo, a large banner graphic, and those four little boxes on the right, right under your banner graphic. Those are actually customizable tabs, and you can insert um, custom HTML pages there, so little mini websites. Um, and for this example, one of our clients had an HTML tab that shows their recent blog post. There's a newsletter sign up, featured jobs from that week, and also a Facebook user can search their jobs right from their Facebook page. Uh, so the one nice thing is a nice element to your page, but also you can track how it's working. So if your team sends out an email with a link to this Facebook landing page, you can track, okay, how, how many people came back? Was this worth our time? Um, and, and what we kind of learned from that is, again, testing, being able to see what works on Facebook um, and, and how these custom tabs really can, can drive users to take action right away. There's, there's no fluff at all. The other thing, too, that you want to take a look at is look at Google Analytics on your internal website and see if this page is driving traffic from Facebook to your internal website. Uh, that's essentially where you want them to go. You want them to go to your, your corporate site where they can take action, apply for a job, contact you, etc. So uh, it, within analytics, you'll see metrics on what social networks are driving traffic to your site. Yeah, and, and you can also narrow down in visits here uh, external referrals, so where people are coming from. Um, and then, again, this is kind of talking about the integrated campaigns. Are we driving people to our Facebook page from other marketing initiatives? So uh, what content was featured in your email newsletter that drove traffic? And as you can see on the left there, there's a spike where that, that gray uh, part of the graph is. Uh, and it, we can see that it came from resources.porticostaffing.com. And that's actually our client's subdomain that emails come through. So we can tell when someone clicks on an email, 
they're visiting from this subdomain. And you can see the spike there. So we wanted to go back and look, what did we do in that email that resulted in a spike of visits to our Facebook page? And as you can see, right under the signature, uh, it's a little small, but there's a call to action. Uh, and it just says, like us on Facebook for weekly management, HR, and staffing advice with a link to the page. It's a call to action. It's direct. It gives your uh, audience members an incentive to like you on Facebook. So from this, we've learned, and, and we've done this with some other clients as well, a strong call to action in your emails can result to more visits to your page. And we actually had a question come in on Twitter uh, that was, I'm really frustrated with the task of increasing my audience on social media. And, and this is a great way to do it. Send out emails with direct calls to action to Twitter, Facebook, or LinkedIn, and let your audience know that you're there and give them an incentive to follow you. Yeah, Kyle, there were also some other questions that just came in tied to Facebook tabs and um, how you go about setting up a tab. So uh, in creating a tab, it's almost like creating a, a mini website. So you do need some HTML programming and um, experience. So if you do have questions about setting up a tab, I'd probably suggest just giving our office a call. Uh, we'll have contact information at the end. And um, you can talk to, uh, ask for Brad Smith, myself, or Kyle Denhoff. We'll be happy to kind of walk you through what steps you need to take to, to get that Facebook tab set up. Yeah, and uh, Brad, we also wanted to look at post types. So this is another part of the navigation in, in Facebook Insights, where you can actually look at when your audience logs into Facebook. Uh, so what day of the week are they logging into Facebook? And what time during the day do they use Facebook? For this specific example, uh, Mondays are our largest, our largest audience login. So 386 of our audience members, on average, log into Facebook on Mondays. And when you hover over the day of the week, uh, you'll see a dark line. And you can see that in the bottom right picture, where you can see spikes of when your audience is online. And for this client specifically, their audience visits Facebook around 11.30 AM, 4 PM, and 10 PM. So what that tells us, as a, a staffing owner or marketer, this is when our audience is online. This is the best time to reach them. So when you go through your strategy and develop new posts, schedule them to go out at these times because you have a better chance of getting in front of your audience. Terrific. We, we had another question come in, too, related to the last slide, uh, when you're talking a little bit about email newsletters. And the question was, are email newsletters becoming obsolete now that so many companies have blogs? And it's a great question, but I think it's actually the opposite. I think email newsletters are becoming even more important. Um, and, and think about marketing as a whole. You want to reach as many people as possible through as, diff as many different channels as possible. So y you can leverage your social media content. You can leverage your blog posts and combine that all and create a really effective effective email newsletter. So your social content can be leveraged in email newsletters, your blog content can be leveraged there, and you can use your newsletter to drive traffic back to your social site too. So it's a, it's a real nice um, circle and they all work hand in hand to make sure that you reach a, a large audience, make sure that you surround people with your message and you get in front of them on the platform of their choice. Okay, sorry to interrupt there, Kyle. No, no problem at all. I'm glad we got to the question. Uh, the next part here is, is looking at, at the posts on your page and seeing how they perform. Uh, and this, this gave us some great insight as, as to how this client's audience responds to our content. Uh, when you go to your posts, you can actually uh, click on that reach uh, in the navigation where that arrow is pointing up, and it'll auto filter your reach for the year and show you what posts reach the largest audience. And, and I wanted to pull out these two posts from one of our clients. And the first one says, congratulations to Kayla on her new design and admin support career. And they put out a photo of a recent placement. And like I mentioned, then Kayla probably went on, liked it, commented, and thanked Portico for their service. And all of her friends went on and congratulated her because they're excited for her. And it kind of snowballed. And, and for this client, we only have around 400 likes. And this post saw 900 people. So this client's 
logo and name got in front of 900 people on Facebook. Uh, so for us, we've seen recent placement photos do very, very well. And the second post there is check out our hot job of the week, connect with us to learn more, and apply for this job. And it was actually a video. Uh, the client set up their iPhone in office and simply had a recruiter get in front of the camera and share the hot job, share the job description, and gave a call to action as how to contact them and apply. Uh, and Facebook saw that the video was getting a lot of response. And as we showed in our previous slide, uh, video has the opportunity to be, to be seen by more people. Uh, so these hot job videos uh, are a great way to get in front of your audience and, and reach a much, much larger audience. Uh, the other posts there, actually, two and three, uh, they did No Shave November, and they had a little fun. Uh, one of the people in the office didn't shave for the entire month and gave up-to-date uh, pictures, and they actually donated uh, to a cancer research center in their area for everyone that, that liked those posts. So we saw a lot of re uh, reach there and a lot of engagement. So for staffing firms, we've really found that these recent placement photos and hot job videos will, will do very well for you on the social sites. And then here's here's a little trick. I always I, I get a question of, you know, what what should I be sharing? And and Facebook really uh, gives you a tool in their their graph search is that search bar when you log in. And you can actually put in a, a stream and, and put in pages likes by people who like your company. And Facebook will spit out a list of pages that your audience likes. So you can find what your audience is interested in, whether it's music, uh, games, or sports, and appeal to them. So while we're putting out great resources for their job search or for their staffing and recruiting, we can also connect with them on a personal level. And for this client, uh, we found that a lot of their audience liked Michigan State and Michigan football. So when the game came around, we put out a picture and asked, who do you root for? And we got three comments and also a like. Uh, so find what your audience is interested in and appeal to them and connect with them on a personal level like we've been talking about. And then enough with Facebook. We're going to go to, to Twitter here and talk about Twitter's analytics tools. Uh, and you can go to analytics.twitter.com, and you'll see this login screen. And just use your company username and password to log in just like you would uh, if you were visiting Twitter on a, on a daily basis. And what Twitter really allows is to see what your, your audience is interested in. So we can gain some more insight as to what they like um, other than just on Facebook. Uh, and we actually pulled this one from the Haley Marketing uh, Twitter account to see what our audience is interested in. And as you can see in the top left, they're interested in job searching, career news, job fairs, human resource, and leadership. So that's pretty on point uh, for the staffing industry. You can also look at where your audience is from and top cities, uh, percentage of people that, that come from those cities. You can look at gender, and you can also look at what your followers follow, so what they're interested in other than you. And as you can see there, there's Mashable, Inc., Wall Street Journal, LinkedIn, Forbes, Career Builder, uh, and Staffing Tweets. And, and what you can really learn from this is if our audience is interested in job search, HR, and leadership, let's start sharing content that's surrounded around those topics. It's going to engage them. They're more likely to click and retweet that information. Also, we can share uh, posts from Wall Street Journal, LinkedIn, ASA, because our audience is interested in that. And I think any good content needs to be shared. So it doesn't need to all be about your company. Share what other people are, inter are, are, are sharing for your audience. And also, hopefully, as they see you start sharing their information, they'll give back and start sharing some of the information that you're, you're putting out there on Twitter. The next thing I want to look at is LinkedIn Analytics. And, and LinkedIn Analytics gives us um, a great insight into our, our followers on LinkedIn. And if you go to your company page, it'll look like this. You'll see kind of the tan bar if you're an admin. And you can click the drop-down arrow on the right side of the Edit button and View Page Insights. 
and it'll bring you to uh, an insights page where you can look at a couple things. And one of those things is your posts. And you can look at how your posts are performing. Uh, you can look at if it included an image. You can look at your headline. So go in, you know, maybe at the end of each week, look at which posts performed well. And, and what I mean by performed well is they were seen by more people. They had a large number of impressions. They had a larger number of clicks and more interaction. So pull those posts out and start producing more of those. Uh, and, and you can see here, you know, our post with an image actually performed very well. Um, and it was a reminder about a free staffing webinar. Uh, so it's a resource for our audience. They're going to be interested in that content. Uh, I believe we put a blog post out congratulating one of our um, internal employees on a new certification they received, showing our brand personality. Uh, and we also introduced uh, the Affordable Creative Act, which was a promotion that we did here with Haley. So things that not only share our brand story, but help our end user. Uh, so look at those headlines, look at those images, and see what posts are performing well. And then this is my favorite part of LinkedIn's analytics. You can actually look at your buyer persona. Uh, and this one's from the Haley page, and it's, it's on point. If you look at this, you can look at company size. You can look at seniority and industry. And for us, our audience consists of senior level staffing professionals at small to mid-sized companies. And LinkedIn is right on point. Our largest percentage uh, of visitors to our page work at companies between 11 and 50 employees. They're generally senior level professionals that are visiting our page. And other than marketing and advertising, which is mostly our employers or employees here at Haley, the staffing and recruiting industry is the next large industry. Uh, so go on there, look at your buyer persona so you know what content they're interested in and start sharing to that audience. Kyle, absolutely wonderful tips. Thank you so much uh, for sharing that. So just kind of to recap a few of the things that you said um, and what have we learned. Facebook, you want to look at what day and time your audience is online and look at what type of content they consume. Look at those, uh, as, as you mentioned, those peaks in traffic and figure out what you posted that day. For Twitter, um, look at where your audience is from. What is your audience interested in? And begin sharing more and more of that content. And then on LinkedIn, again, look at what posts produce the most engagement. And look at your buyer persona. It can give you a lot of information about not only your audience on LinkedIn, but who you may want to target offline as well. We get the question all the time, how do I increase my following? So social media is a great delivery channel, but only if you have a good following. So what we suggest doing is, is sharing your social presence via email. If you do an email newsletter, explain to people the value they're going to get out of following you on social media outlets. Don't just say follow us. Explain why they should follow you. What are they going to get out of it? What's in it for them? You need to include strong calls to actions in your emails and in just about every uh, marketing activity you do. You want people to take a specific action, so share a good call to action. Make it easy for them to interact and do business with you. And uh, we mentioned here, give, give your email audience a, a reason to connect with you. You need to entice them. Don't just say, follow me, follow me, follow me. You're not begging for follows. You need to show what value you're going to provide to them. Another great way to build your social following is to pay for it. So each of these social networks allow you to have very targeted pay-per-click campaigns. Facebook, for example, you could export a list from your ATS and upload it into Facebook and run ads specifically to people that are in your ATS. You could do this with prospects. You could do this with candidates. So you can have ads show up to people and surround them while they're uh, on social media, while their defenses are down and give away some type of, of content, give away something of value, get your name in front of them. And uh, again, your ads need to provide an incentive to the user. You're not just pushing something out. You're not just pushing your company name. You're providing something of value, something that they want, something that they desire, something that solves a problem that they have. And that's a great way to build social engagement and get more people to interact with your brand. Another great way to build your following is simply to follow others. This works great on Twitter. So Kyle showed that example of using Twitter analytics to find out what, your, what other uh, Twitter accounts, what other companies your followers uh, enjoy. So 
there, there was Fast Company, there was Wall Street Journal, there were some uh, uh, local industry uh, publications. Look for those, uh, go to those pages. Um, go to your Chamber of Commerce Twitter account. See who follows them and begin following those people. The more people you follow, the more people will reciprocate. So um, connect with others. Get out there and be active. Make sure that all of your candidates and clients are connections. Encourage them to connect with you. I, I've heard of one staffing company that even has a, a kiosk in their, in their waiting room where candidates, when they walk in the brick and mortar facility, can go right there, log into Facebook, and like the company. And why do they do it? Because this company shares top jobs, the most recent job opportunities there. They share career advice. They offer something of value. And then the third bullet here, your competitors. I'm not suggesting to go out and follow your competitors, but I'm suggesting going out and seeing who follows your competitors. Okay, so look at what companies follow your competitors. Look at what candidates follow your competitors. Begin following those people because they've already expressed an interest in recruiting services or staffing services. Why not get them to convert to you? So uh, again, do a little look, do a little recon and find out uh, what the competitive landscape looks like, and see how you can get those people to follow you as well. A wonderful way to uh, inc increase your following on LinkedIn is to join LinkedIn groups. So look at groups uh, that relate to the industries you staff and recruit for. Look for local groups in your geographic market, and begin contributing to those groups. Okay, begin posting blog content, post questions, answer questions. Be a good resource. Be a good group member, and your name will get in front of more and more people. The other benefit to joining a group is that when you're, in a member, when you're a member of a group, when you're accepted into that group, you can send one-to-one -one invites to anyone else in that group. Okay, so think about your clients. Think about what groups they belong to. Join those groups and begin following people that you're not already connected with. It's a great way to build your personal network and get your company in front of more and more people. And you know, kind of to, to wrap things up, how do I know my efforts are working? Well, Kyle went through all those statistics. That's how you know. Uh, you look at individual statistics per network. Okay, you look at um, whether or not your posts are reaching more people. You look at social referrals. You look at spikes in traffic. You look at audience growth. There are some great, great statistics out there that you can use to make sure that your efforts really are working. And Kyle, you have an absolutely wonderful uh, case study here about you know one minor little change that was that was the, the, or one minor little way that people interact with your content that can have a big impact. So if, if you wouldn't mind walking through this this particular example, that'd be great. Yeah, this example is looking at a particular Facebook post, and this client posted open jobs. And as you can see, there's no image, there's no video, there are two text-based posts. Um, but one was seen by 211 people, and the other was seen by almost 500. And the reason for that was the comments. And, and you can see that there's three likes on the first post, four on the second. But the first post had no comments, and the second post had seven. Facebook's algorithm update at the end of, of last year encourages people to comment. It favors conversation. So like we talked about earlier, using it as a customer service tool. Get on there, answer questions, and create conversation on your individual posts. Great. And then, um, Kyle, talk a little bit about um, how you can increase social referrals or how you can, can look at whether or not you're getting social referrals. Right. And I think the, the big thing about social marketing is, yeah, we want to show our brand story. We want to get engagement. But we also want to get people back to our website. Because when it comes down to it, we want to improve our, our business goals. So look at social referrals. And if you have Google Analytics installed on your website, you'll be able to go to acquisition, social, and then overview. And you can actually compare time periods. So for this specific example, we're looking at 2013 compared to 2012. And we focused a lot of our efforts on Facebook in 2013. And as you can see, there's a 346% increase in referrals back to our website on Facebook. So you can really take into account whether it's by quarter, by month, or by year. You know, Are we getting more people back to our website, back to our job board, back to our Contact Us page from social? And, and you can tell that your, your efforts are working because you're driving more traffic back to your site. 
Great. And then you had also had a mini case study. Uh, if you could kind of go over the the most important parts of this. Yeah, the the social referrals mini case study was looking at a client who came to us. They were performing very well uh, in Google search results, but they had kind of a few few organic visits than they had before, and they were looking to draw in more of a localized candidate uh, to their site. So we did a couple things. We upgraded the on-page SEO. So we, we upgraded the coding on their contact pages. And then we actually built four Google Plus pages for each location. And this client spent two hours a day on Facebook. And, and that's the one thing I wanted to bring up. Uh, and once we made all these changes, the client started to see a 56% increase in site visitors, 62% increase in direct traffic, 15% increase in the number of keywords used to find their site. So we know that uh, our SEO was, was an upgrade for them. And then the two big things, Facebook became their number five referral source in 2013. And that means Facebook was the number five website that drove people back to their site. Uh, and the one thing they shared with me was they filled 23 temp jobs through Facebook alone. So they interacted with someone on Facebook, drove them back to the website for an application, and ended up filling that job. Great. And, and Kyle, just walk through uh, referral traffic. Yep. And like, like we talked about comparing that referral traffic from uh, a time before, so a year before, uh, you can look at referral traffic for a specific month. And again, looking at spikes in your website. So what did I share? Where did I share it? And how did I present it? And we, and we took this from one of our clients. They, they put a post, a hot job, out on LinkedIn. Uh, and it got a good response. There was a spike in referral traffic that day. And for us, we look at that and go, OK, LinkedIn's a good spot to post our opening, job openings. And in the post, you can see we use, we're hiring as the title. And there's direct contact information. So those are probably two things we want to include in our next hot job post that we put on LinkedIn. So taking a look at that spike in referral traffic and finding out what you're sharing. And then there's a couple other things you can look at. And, and this is one of my favorite parts of Google Analytics, is you can actually see what pages on your website are performing very well on social media. So you can go to Acquisition, Social, Overview, and then click on the individual network. So you'll click on Facebook, LinkedIn, Google+, Plus, or, or Twitter. And you can see what URL performed very well. And for us and for our clients, two things we want to look at. Uh, if you have the Haley Marketing job board, we have a custom URL. And you can see that as number three there. You can see the title of the job and the location. So for us, we posted that job onto a social network. And now we can say, when we posted that, we had 22 visitors find the post and visit that individual job on our job board. Uh, again, relating back to our business goals, we want to drive applicants to the job board. And then number eight there, you can actually see your blog post. So each blog post has a custom URL that relates to the topic. So if you have a blog and some of your topics start performing well, they're driving more traffic, you're going to want to start doing more of those blog posts moving forward, maybe in different markets, maybe for a different industry. Um, but look at what jobs and what content performs well on your website and start sharing that more on social. Great. Thanks, Kyle. And I know we're uh, running a little short on time, so we might go pretty quick through these uh, last few slides. But if you have questions, please use the question area. And if we can't cover them or if we don't have time, we'll follow up individually after the webinar. Um, so talk a little bit about acquisition and, and now conversion. Yep. The, the one big thing that, that I want to go back to is um, the business goals. So our business goals, again, are to drive traffic to your job board and to your Contact Us page. So you can set up. Uh, goals and analytics and all it will do is tally when someone visits that page so if someone visits your job board it'll tally a visit if they visit your contact us page it'll tally a visit and the one thing you can look at for social is visits coming in how long they spent on your website but you can also see if they resulted in a conversion if they ended up on your contact us or job board 
And for this client specifically, 61% of our visits from social networking sites result in someone on those two pages. So social directly impacting our business. Yeah, and Kyle, I know one thing that you do uh, and a big proponent of is, is testing. So there's a you know a few different tests that we like to use: um, headline A/B testing, post type testing, open and close ended questions, test time. So if you wouldn't mind quickly walking through a few of these tests and what you found, uh, I think that'd be helpful. Yeah, we can kind of dig dig a little deeper into our posts and how they perform. Uh, and a headline A/B test is simply looking at what you put in a specific headline. Uh, for this one, in, in one of our clients in Des Moines, Iowa, we used two different headlines. We used job opening when we posted a new job, and we used open job in those brackets. And you can look at impressions, clicks, and engagement, and test which headline works best for you. Uh, one of our clients in Syracuse, New York, used We're Hiring, uh, and we've noticed on average we get a lot more clicks when we use We're Hiring. So test to see what headlines are performing well and start to use that headline more and more moving forward. And the next thing you can look at is uh, open versus closed ended questions. And, and this works on Facebook, this specific example. Um, again, don't make your audience think too hard. We posted something that was multiple choice, a very easy answer. And then we posted something that was more open ended, asking how people prepare for interviews. And we didn't get a response. So use those closed-ended questions to make it easy for your audience to answer. And as they answer, you'll see your engagement and reach go up. And then we wanted to bring up uh, Dan Zarella is a social scientist. He's, he's a well-known thought leader in, in marketing. And he looks at uh, even deeper parts of posts. And he looked at tweets. Uh, so he suggests putting a tweet out once an hour. Um, he also suggests using verbs and adverbs instead of nouns. So what you do, action, calls to action in your post. Uh, he suggested tweeting later in the day and also tweeting on the weekends. Uh, now this is from his data, but make sure, like we talked about, use your insights and look at when your audience is online, when they're consuming content, and share when your audience is on there. So this may be a nice starting point for you tweeting and sharing later in the day and on weekends, but definitely key in on your audience specifically. Terrific. Thanks, Kyle. You know, you, you talked about Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, uh, touched on a few other sites, but I think one thing that we need to remember as staffing and recruiting firms is to pay attention to social review sites. So sites like Google, Bing, Yahoo, all they each have a, a review component. Look at Yelp, Glassdoor, and make sure that you know what people are saying about you. And, and Kyle, you included a fun factor. 72% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. And think about an online review. It, they're so much more visible. Okay, so it's extremely important that you know what people are saying about you and you respond appropriately. If there's an, a bad negative review on Yelp, um, respond to it, but do so respectfully and explain how what steps you're taking to improve your service, and that can go a long way. And we get the question all the time, I don't have time to do this. Well, you know, it doesn't have to take a lot of time. You can make it part of your morning routine and spend 15 minutes in the morning and 15 minutes at the end of the day. Uh, use your internal resources, so spread time across your team. It doesn't have to be just one person that's in charge of this. Everyone can contribute. And then there, there's other ways to make great social content. Let's say you've put together a great ebook, or you have a white paper or a salary guide. Break that up into small snippets and share that content on social outlets. Um, share one bullet point, share one fact, share one statistic. Drive that traffic back to a page where they can download that long form content creates great social traffic, it drives traffic back to your website, and it encourages action, it encourages response. And we mentioned uh, uh, paid advertising. Paid can be a great way to help you reach a large network. Let's say you're, you don't have a great following on Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn. Look at using some of the paid options to build that network, get your content in front of more people. So instead of spending your focus, uh, your time on, on building your network organically, you can use paid to speed up the process and get in front of, of more people. And you know, here here's an example of a case study in which in which we used some some paid reach. So uh, the nice thing about about paid uh, reach is it keeps your company top of mind with the right people. 
Okay, you can target the people that you want to target. You can raise awareness. And in this specific example, we were trying to highlight available IT positions. Uh, we exported from uh, our client's ETS system a list of 13,000 people that were proven to have the exact skills that this position required. We used uh, paid ads to get that in front of those people. And for $200, we filled a very valuable direct hire position. Okay? It got that job in front of people, passive job seekers that wouldn't have seen it otherwise, and that position was filled. So it can be very, very effective, especially in direct recruiting. Um, I, I kind of mentioned this already, but if you do have long form content, again, like a, a white paper, a salary guide, an ebook, use social media uh, to highlight the value found in that book and drive people back to a landing page like we do here. We've put together a great marketing best practices guide. It shares some helpful tips. Uh, we're sharing all our industry secrets. We're pushing that out through social media, both organically and paid, and we're driving traffic back to a real quick and short landing page. This is generating a lot of leads, and you can do the same thing too. You just need to provide something of value, and then use your delivery channels to get that message out in front of people. And those include direct mail, they include email marketing, social media, blogging. Use all the channels at your disposal. And uh, there was a question that was asked earlier that I didn't uh, answer right away because I knew the slide was coming up. It's, you know, how, what third-party tools do you use to make social media marketing more effective and easier? And here are three great tools that, that we like to use. One is called Buffer. Okay, this allows you to help manage your social media accounts. You click on articles that you want to share, and it gets put into a buffer account. And you set specific times when you want to share content to your audience. So we look at our audience on Facebook and on Twitter. We know when they're most active. So we have our buffer account set to publish content at those times. It's a great, easy tool. There's Hootsuite. There's Twitter feed. You can use all of these to automatically push blog content out to your social networks and help automate your social media marketing presence. With that said, uh, we've had a lot of questions come up throughout the webinar. Um, we're probably not going to be able to get to them all. We will try, but even if we don't answer your question, uh, we'll follow up with you directly after the webinar. Uh, but please use that, that side panel. Submit your questions now, and we'd be happy to answer those. And I'm going to start. We had a few come in during the presentation that we didn't answer. And, and one was, can you please talk about the frequency of posts and shares on, on different media? And uh, it's a great question, and it depends on the social network. For example, Twitter, it's perfectly acceptable at several times a day to tweet. On Facebook, uh, we suggest you know three to five times per week to start, but then use insights, use analytics to determine uh, whether your reach is increasing, look at likes and, and unlikes, and use that data to your advantage. So you can really hone in on what the right frequency for your company and your target audience is by looking at the data. Another question just came in. Um, when I go to post an outside article on Facebook and I want to add it to my business page, I always end up being taken to my personal account. And that's right, because the way you access your company page on Facebook as an administrator is by logging in to your personal account. The way that, that you're going to post this to your company page is up in the right-hand corner, uh, you'll see a little gear. You click that gear and you can use Facebook as a page that you're an administrator on as opposed to using it uh, on your own. Let's see, another question came in. How long should you give social media a chance before you can expect a return? A return? Um, and you know, this is a tough question to answer because it depends on the market, it depends on your geographic area, and it depends on who you're already connected with. So I would look, you know, instead of the, there's no magic, magic number to say, okay, you know, now this is working. What I would look for are consistent increases in growth and consistent increases in engagement and consistent increases in traffic from social sites to your website. So I would use those metrics to make sure that you have uh, th that you're growing, okay? Um, and you should start to see, you know, f for me, I think we start to see real nice engagement at the three to four month mark um, of, of actively and consistently posting content. But the key is just, just don't give up. Keep doing it, and this is going to work. I have yet to see a staffing and recruiting firm that does uh, social activities consistently that doesn't see a nice improvement. So um, 
you know, I, I can expect that you will see a return. You're going to see increased visits. You're going to see increased likes and increased engagement. And, Another and question Brad, came I just, in when, go ahead, Kyle. I just wanted to build off of that a little bit uh, quickly is you can use the best practices and share regularly. Um, but you need to make your audience aware that you're on social. So you can go out there and start sharing um, and sharing great content, but you're really not going to see that benefit until your recruiters, your team starts letting people know, letting people know through email, letting people know they come through the door, uh, that you're on these networks and giving them an incentive. So, so make sure you, know, you, you do an outreach program kind of to start to let people know. Uh, and then I think you're really going to start to see that that increase in benefit. Terrific. Thank you so much. Um, we're a little over time, but I want to thank everybody for joining us. We have a great uh, series of webinars coming up, so be sure to check back uh, at lunchwithhaley.com, and we'll post uh, new updates there, and we'll be sure to uh, include emails and let you know about the, the next Lunch with Haley as well. The slides are available for this, and we'll be posting a recording, so be on the lookout for that. And if you do have specific questions, please feel free to reach out to us. Uh, the phone number is on the screen right now. Kyle's contact information is there. Uh, please feel free to reach out to me, and we'd be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Thank you again, and we'll t uh, hopefully see you on our next webinar.